Hello my friends, welcome to Pro Arm Strings. I'm Henriette and in this lesson we're thinking about the Détaché Bow Stroke. And the Détaché Bow Stroke is the default mode of playing in violin playing. And for a long time the word Détaché has been quite confusing to me because I'm thinking Détaché means detached, therefore separated. But actually when we play the notes, the bow strokes are separated as in down and up bows, but the notes that we play have no pauses between them, so they go one after the other without any breaks in between. So we could view a détaché bow stroke as a separate bow bow stroke as opposed to legato where you play notes slurred. Now in a moment we're going to practice détaché bow strokes and we're going to practice that they are really nice and even in speed and in bow pressure and in volume. But before we do that, we just want to think about what happens to your right arm when you play a détaché bow stroke. So let me put my violin and my bow away. And when we play détaché bow strokes, we use what I call, and this is very much my term, elbow hinges. And with elbow hinges, I mean that you start your bow stroke from your elbow and you just hinge your elbow in and out and in and out like that. And that means that your shoulder and your upper arm should not be involved in the movement. So it's not something that you move your upper arm forwards and backwards. Your shoulder and your upper arm remain still, although soft and, and relaxed. And the bow stroke comes from the elbow. So let's do that a few times and get used to what that feels like before we pick up the bow. Now let's try the same movement with the bow in our hand and it will probably feel very different to you now. Still you want to focus on your elbow and go in and out and in and out and in and out and be careful that you don't do this with your upper arm or even up and down. I see all sorts of variations sometimes. So just the movement just starts from your elbow. And you can already feel now that this involves some movement of the wrist and maybe of the fingers as well, and we'll come to that. Now let's get your violin and let's see how that works out on the string. And I'd like to practice this on an open D string. So let's put your bow down in the middle on the D string and let's just practice those elbow hinges up and down, or down and up I should say, on the D string. <laughs> connected to one another so there are no gaps in between the notes that's not what we want we want to lovely job now we're playing at the upper half of the bow and we're going to stick to the upper half for a little bit longer but what I'd like you to do now is listen and try to play this bow stroke without any accents at all. So here we go, listen very carefully. Beautiful. Let's now start it up bow, shall we? cover this area here so what I call the grand middle so we're starting slightly below the middle now focus on expanding your elbow hinge here <laughs> Try to relax your bow hand. So you want to try and avoid squeezing the bow in your hand, but hold it very gently. Now earlier on we were listening out for accents. This time I want you to listen out for differences in loud and soft. And you want to play the volume as evenly as you possibly can. So no crescendos, no diminuendos at all. Let's play the same bow stroke as before, but this time we're going to start up bow. Listen carefully to the volume. Super. So when we keep the volume 
the same, it means that we keep the speed of the bow strokes the same and also the pressure on the bow the same. And this is something that you want to be working at and see if you can make your bowing very consistent so that all your bow strokes are very, very similar. Now we're moving to the lower half of the bow. And as we play at the lower half of the bow, we're going to try to involve more of the finger movement of your bow hand. You might do this without the bow in your hand and just practice what it feels like to stretch and bend your fingers. And then when we're starting here, you want to try and relax your bow hand. You don't need to squeeze the bow because the bow will be balancing on the string you see. You hold the bow only to steer it but not to hold it and stop it from falling if you see what I mean. This time let's start it up bow. Let's start in the middle and play towards the heel. focusing on just opening and closing my elbow hinges and I'm focusing on the fact that I'm leaving my right shoulder down. Let's practice it again at the lower half of the bow starting down bow. improving your technique here, super work. Finally we're going to go back to the upper half of the bow and we're going to listen to the connections between the notes. We've said there are no gaps between the notes, no silences between the notes, but we want to make sure that we don't hear the bow changes. I'll give you an example of how not to do it. <laughs> probably hear that every bow stroke started with a little accent. The purpose of this exercise is to eliminate any bow changes that you might have been hearing before. So listen really really carefully and, and see if we can make every bow change inaudible. We're starting down bow in the middle of the bow. <laughs> starting it up bow. Super practice, really well done. Now making detaché bow strokes really smooth and supple requires daily practice, so feel free to come back to this video time and time again. Even in six months time you might review this technique and see if you can still improve on it. And these exercises are valuable for beginners, but also for intermediate players and even advanced players can benefit from regular data shape practice because you enhance your listening skills all the time. I'm really very grateful for you having watched this video right until the end. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.